Hello, I'm Cindy with Wisconsin Voices for Recovery, and this is Speak Out on Stigma. Today, we'll be hearing from Dr. Bobby Redwood, Emergency Physician and Physician Improvement Advisor for the Wisconsin Hospital Association. Hi, Dr. Redwood. How are you today? I'm doing well, Cindy. Thanks for having me. Great, great. So tell me, what do you think makes people use stigmatizing language? Oh, it's, it's such a great and complex question. I think I could answer it best talking about my actual clinical environment. So I'm a physician in the emergency department. And, you know, society's use of stigmatizing language existed long before any of us got into medicine. We see it on TV and newspapers, really everywhere. And I don't necessarily blame the physicians and nurses working in the emergency department. We all have some degree of stress and probably even PTSD from the pain and suffering that we see on a daily basis in our work. And one of the coping mechanisms that you see for this is what I call gallows humor making light of really the least funny subjects that there are. That being said, I don't think there's any excuse for it. Um, I think a more mature coping mechanism is empathy and a resilient commitment to alleviating human suffering. It's a higher level skill. It takes years to develop, but combating stigma on shift every day, real time, um, is a way that we can help our patients and really our colleagues as well move to a better place where substance use disorder is viewed not as some societal ill, but rather as a treatable medical condition that commands our empathy and professionalism. Absolutely, thank you so much. How can reducing stigma help save lives? Well, that, that one's a little more easy. Um, it's really straightforward in my field. By using non-stigmatizing language, person-first language in the emergency department, and by truly dropping our stigma, by inviting everyone in as patients who, who are in need of help, we invite our patients into a safe space. Um, a space where you can have a conversation about next steps on the road to wellness. Using stigmatizing language is such a terrible way to spend this precious moment in a patient's recovery journey. And honestly, it poisons the therapeutic relationship. It makes them feel bad and it makes us feel bad as healthcare providers. A lot of patients just leave when they hear stigmatizing language and that blows our chance to help them into a treatment program, um, for example, to start medication for opioid use disorder. So we can save lives. The number needed to treat, you know, we talk about that in medicine for buprenorphine for opioid use disorder is two. Every two times we prescribe it, we save a life. Uh, and if somebody leaves because of stigmatizing language, that's such a missed opportunity. I agree. I agree. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I wanted to just thank you for this mission and for the platform to speak out against stigma. Um, there is a tri-state um, solution to this. It's called the Superior Health Quality Alliance's Shine a Light on Stigma campaign. And we have a pledge that if you're a healthcare provider, you can sign yourself or you can share with a colleague. I would encourage everyone listening to this to visit the website, Shine a Light on Stigma. Consider sh signing the pledge yourself and consider sharing it with your organization. Thank you so much. That is a great opportunity. Shine the light on stigma. Please check that out. And thank you so much, Dr. Redwood, for sharing your views on stigma. And thank you to our viewers for watching. Speak Out on Stigma is a forum to raise awareness about the harmful impact of stigma on those in and seeking recovery. Recovery is for everyone. Together, we can eliminate stigma. Don't forget to like, comment, and share this video. Thank you and have a great day.